Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to uh, give an example of how to uh, calculate electric potential from a linear uh, charge distribution. So what we're looking at here is we've got this uh, line of charge here. Uh, we're going to imagine a total charge Q uh, spread out uniformly over a total length L. And what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, calculate the electric potential here at a point I've called P, a distance A away from one end. Now, um, you know, before I dig into this, one thing to consider, this is a charge distribution. Those come in three flavors. You've got uh, what are called linear charge distributions or charge distributed along some sort of curve. Then you have uh, area charge distributions where maybe the charge is spread out over some sort of area. And you can also have what are called volume charge distributions where you've got a charge spread out through some sort of three-dimensional space here. Um, this one is a charge spread out along a path. So each of these areas have uh, a charge density that goes with them. The charge density here is the linear charge density. Most books uh, would represent it with the Greek letter lambda here. If this charge were uniformly distributed, then we could calculate the charge density by just taking the total charge per unit length. Again, this would not be true if the charge were not uniformly distributed. All right, next, <clears throat> and the question is, you know, how do we calculate the potential here? Well, one way to calculate electric potential is this. The electric potential due to a point charge is kq over r. But again, this is for a point charge and point charge only. This is a charge distribution, so we can't directly apply this to the charge distribution. What we can do is break this up into little pieces that are point charges. So what I'm going to do is put a coordinate system here at maybe the left end, x, y. And then I'm going to imagine breaking this up into a bunch of little pieces. And here's one of those pieces right here. And I'm going to say that the length of that chunk is dx, and it's at a location x here. And what I'm going to do now is write an equation for the electric potential at this point due to this charge. Because we can consider uh, this little guy here a point charge. So what I'm going to do is use this uh, equation, which is good for point charges, and apply it to this element right here. So the electric potential at P due to this little chunk of charge would be a differential potential because it's coming from an infinitely small uh, piece of charge. And that's going to equal K dQ over R, where the dQ is going to be the charge on this chunk which I can get if I take my charge density, and I'm just going to write lambda instead of Q over L, and multiply it by the length of this chunk, which is dx. So our electric potential at P is going to equal K times lambda dx over R. Let me talk about that R now. So let's see, the R in this equation is the distance from the charge, or your chunk of charge, to the point you're applying it at. So in my picture, that's the distance r right there. So if we look at this, from here to here in the variables that I have labeled uh, would be L plus A, and then from here to here is X. So the distance we need r is equal to L plus A minus X. Now if you look at some textbook or you watch somebody else's videos or you talk to somebody else about this, you, you may see a different value here. Well, what you call R is going to depend on where you put your coordinate system. So if you put your coordinate system in the center or here or at P, you could have different values. So keep that in mind. In terms of the coordinate system that I have drawn, that's what my R would be. So we got L plus A minus X. Another thing I'd like to point out at this point, you know, if you're in one of my classes, you know that I go absolutely ballistic when you calculate vector quantities and you don't have vectors. You, you don't draw those vectors on the page. Well, electric potential is not a vector quantity. It's an energy concept. So you'll notice I have not drawn any vectors here at P. This is not an electric field calculation. We're calculating the electric potential. So because it's not a vector quantity, no vectors at P required. So I got my expression here for the uh, potential at P due to this little chunk of charge here, and now what we have to do is just cumulatively add them all up. So the total electric potential is going to be, all right, so adding in the language of calculus here, we're going to be summing up or integrating this expression, k lambda dx over l plus a minus x. 
and then we just have to choose limits on the integral. So that's going to depend on how you orient your coordinate system. Where I've put my coordinate system here, the smallest value x can be is 0, and it's going to run to here, which is L. So this is you know, what I would call an integral expression that gives the electric potential at uh, P. I'm going to go ahead and uh, work this integral. Now, whenever I work integrals, I always uh, um, do substitutions here to clean them up. I'm going to make a quick little substitution. I am going to let u equal L plus A minus X. Now, if we do that, du would equal minus dx because L and A are constant. And whenever you do a substitution, um, I, I'm a big believer in this. I, I, I believe in the Yoda philosophy here. You know, in uh, the movies, Yoda, Yoda always says, do or do not, but there is no try. And I apply a similar concept uh, when I do integrations. I either do substitutions or I don't. I don't do them kind of halfway. So once I've decided to make a, a algebraic substitution, which I have, I'm going to change everything, including the limits. So if x is equal to 0, whoops. U, I can get from this expression, that's going to equal L plus A. And if X is equal to L, and I'm just going to take that and sub it here, U would equal to A. So my new integral is identically equal to the new one, which is now going to run from L plus A to A. Let's see what we got here. K lambda, I'll just put that right there. In a slightly different order. Let's see, the dx is minus du. I'm going to just bring the minus sign out front over u. So <clears throat> what we have now is an integral that's reasonably uh, easy to do. The integral du over u is natural log u. So we're going to have this lambda times k times the natural log of. Now, if I applied the integral to this, right here. It would be natural log A over L plus A. What I'm going to do is absorb that minus sign into the limits, and what that does is uh, flips that upside down. So we're going to have natural log of L plus A over A. So a little hard to read there. Let me rewrite it down here. So we've got K or lambda times K times the natural log of L plus A over A, and there's my expression for the electric potential at P. Um, this is going to be some quantity. It's going to have units of volts or joule per coulomb. I always like to think big picture, you know, why would we want this? What does it tell us? Well, what it would tell us is the potential energy of a particle. Let's say I wanted to put a proton here or an electron or some other charged particle. We would know its potential energy, which would be potential times charge. Also, there's a differential relationship between the electric field and the electric potential. Um, this expression can be differentiated. Uh, to give uh, an expression for the uh, electric field here at P, but I think I'll save that for another video. So anyway, the purpose of this video is to just uh, demonstrate how to set up a simple uh, integral for a one-dimensional charge distribution to calculate electric potential. I hope this has accomplished that. Have a great day.